Hello everyone, today I would like to talk about plates and Karamba 3D. For this I prepared an example with a circular and a quadratic plate under uniform load. The geometry is quite simple, it's either a circle or a rectangular plate. And the surface is uh, at first meshed. Then input into the Karamba mesh to shell component and then uh, forms part of the structure. The next thing is to define the supports. For this I use all the points which come out here of the mesh to shell component. With Georg Lobes uh, custom component I can select now all those points which lie on the parameter of the, of the plate, as you can see here, and they are then used as supports, the support uh, blocks, the supports block all the translations in x, y and z direction. And one needs to specify also a support against rotation in global z direction, which means perpendicular to the plate. The reason is that uh, the shell and plate elements in Karamba 3D do not have a drilling stiffness. So um, one needs to support at least one node about this uh, axis against rotation, otherwise one would have a rigid body mode in the structure. The load is a mesh load. The mesh is taken again from the surface of the plate. And the load is a uniformly distributed load of 1 kN per square meter pointing downwards in global direction. The cross section of the plate has a thickness of 10 cm and the material is steel, which is not very uh, realistic because uh, one would have to weld uh, enormous amounts. However, the the tables from uh, literature for comparing the results, they are given for materials with a lateral contraction coefficient of 0.3 and that's the reason why I chose here steel. So let's take a look at uh, the calculation result. <clears throat> I'll disable now the preview of the mesh edges. And what you can see here are the so-called shear lines. So um, here's the model view where I can scale the, the displacements. Since the geometry, the supports and the loads are symmetric with respect to the global z-axis, also the displacements are symmetric as you can see here. Um, you can see also the, the deformation and the shear lines are generated using the, the line results on shell component and they show um, how the loads are transferred from somewhere on the plate towards the supports and also this uh, load or path of forces is uh, in radial direction and so this results then for a uniformly distributed load um, in uniformly distributed uh, reaction forces at the parameter. Um, this um, example here is the most uh, easiest uh, plate uh, problem. Uh, and uh, in order to check how accurate the results of the Karamba plate calculation 
R. I'll compare the results uh, against the results of um, Timoshenko and Wojnowski Krieger, uh, which can be found in their book Theory of Plates and Shells. And uh, in order to calculate the displacements and the bending moments, uh, I use here these formulas. And uh, in order to see the bending moments, I use here the Camber 3D shell section component by having here a section uh, along the along this this line here, and uh, the output is first of all the displacement in set direction, which can be seen here, and the bending moment in the tangential direction of, of the line, which you can see here. Um, okay, the displacement, the maximum displacement is, uh, as you can see here, is 0.2 centimeters and the maximum and minimum bending moment uh, is taken here from the section component um, and amounts to minus 5.15 kilonewton meter per meter to uh, nearly zero. The reason why there is not an exact zero here is because of the discretization with, uh, with the uh, plate elements. In order to get the analytical results, I need to, first of all, disassemble the material to get a hold of the material properties of the Young's modulus and the shear modulus. Using the Young's modulus and shear modulus, one, one can calculate the coefficient of lateral contraction nu, which is then together with Young's modulus and shell or plate thickness h used to calculate the flexural plate rigidity. One needs to make sure that the physical units are all consistent and um, for this uh, calculation I chose kilonewton and centimeter as the base unit so I need to calculate now the uniformly distributed load in kilonewton per square centimeter, same goes for the dimension of the uh, circular plate. And uh, using now formula equation 68 of uh, theory of plates and shells, I get now this uh, maximum displacement. Q is the load, A radius, D flexural rigidity, nu lateral contraction coefficient and this nicely corresponds to the results of the finite element calculation. The formula for the maximum bending moment here in the middle can also be found um, in the book. It's equation 69 and 70 and um, the result is 5.15 kilonewton meter per meter which uh, corresponds also to the finite element uh, result. Um, the negative sign here is uh, only an expression of the fact that the, at how the finite elements are oriented uh, with respect to the uh, external load, so uh, doesn't play a crucial role here. Um, the behavior of this uh, plate here changes when uh, the sh its shape changes. So I now gradually deform it into a rectangle. And you can see now that uh, the bending moments change and also these shear lines. Uh, there are now preferred regions here where the loads are transferred to. And instead of having um, one curve of the bending moment underneath the, the plate, we have now here a change of the sign of the bending moment. This means that uh, these corners here are um, causing a fixation of, the, of this part here 
um, which would like to to rotate upwards. Um, let's uh, take a look at the uh, at the bending moments. If I rotate now here, uh, you see that the behavior is not symmetric anymore. And when comparing the results to uh, the ones given in theory of plates and shells, um, we see now that the displacements have slightly changed. Here, this is the exact formula. It's equation 132, which is actually a, um, a serious solution, as you can see here. And the value, however, nicely corresponds to the result of the finite element calculation. The same is true for the bending moments. The bending moments are now calculated according to this um, diagram here. It's figure 63 of theory of plates and shells. Uh, here the maximum bending moment at the corner is 0.0325. Q times A squared, and here the value for the maximum moment in the middle, which again nicely corresponds to the result of the shell section component. One last thing, um, the plate and shell elements in Karamba 3D, they are based on the Kirchhoff uh, assumption, which makes them a little bit um, too rigid in in shear. One needs to have a, a very dense mesh to get the convergent uh, shear behavior. That's the reason why the shear forces do not converge as fast as the moments. Also, the shear forces are proportional to the third derivative of the displacement. So that's also a reason why they are more inaccurate. However, in case of a uh, quadratic plate. One gets out here at the corners singular support forces, they are called R here. They have uh, this magnitude, which is in our case 6.5 kN pointing downwards. And if I enable now the, the display of the reaction forces, I get here now these uh, singular support forces as 6.12 kN, which is nearly uh, the theoretical value. Thank you very much for your attention. Goodbye.